Okay, so uh, we're diving into a topic today that's, uh, well, it's a little bit personal, a little bit universal. Farts. Wait. It's something we all do, but let's be honest, we don't always love to talk about it. But, <laughs> you know, our listeners are a curious bunch. In fact, this deep dive was actually a listener request. Someone out there really wanted to explore the surprisingly serious history of farts. And believe me, there's more to it than you might think. So let's uh, clear the air, so to speak, and get right into it. What exactly is a fart? I mean, we all know what it is, but like, scientifically speaking. Well, at its most basic, a fart is just a mixture of gases produced during digestion. But it gets interesting when you break down what those gases actually are. Okay, so walk us through it. What's the recipe for a, uh, shall we say, classic fart? Well, you've got your nitrogen, which actually makes up the largest percentage, somewhere between 20 and 90 percent. Wow, that's a lot. Who knew our farts were mostly just air? Right. And then there's oxygen, usually a, a much smaller amount, around 0 to 10 percent. And of course, we can't forget carbon dioxide clucking in at about 10 to 30 percent. So far, so good. Nothing too shocking there. But something tells me these aren't the ones responsible for clearing a room. You're right. It's the other gases in much smaller amounts that really give farts their um, distinctive character. Ah, yes, the character of a fart. Let's hear it. What else is brewing in there? Well, hydrogen can make up anywhere from zero to 50% of a fart. 50%. So basically, sometimes our farts are half flammable gas. That's both terrifying and kind of amazing. And then there's methane, usually less than 10%, but potent nonetheless. Methane. That's the stuff cows are famous for, right? Yeah. Or infamous, depending on how you look at it. But I have a feeling that even methane isn't the whole story when it comes to fart smells, right? There's got to be something else in the mix. You're on the right track. Yeah. It's actually the sulfur compounds, particularly hydrogen sulfide, that really pack a punch when it comes to odor. Hydrogen sulfide, isn't that rotten eggs? The one and only. So basically, our guts are like little chemistry labs cooking up this unique blend of gases. And the chefs behind these aromatic creations, if I'm not mistaken, are our gut bacteria. Exactly. Our gut microbiome, which is just a fancy way of saying all the bacteria living on our intestines, plays a huge role in how we digest food and, yes, produce gas. So those little guys are like having a party down there and sometimes things get a little, shall we say, rowdy. You could say that. Different bacteria thrive on different types of food, and their digestive processes can produce different gases as byproducts. So it's like the more diverse our diet, the more diverse our fart symphony. Something like that. And some foods, like beans, lentils, and cruciferous veggies, are notorious for getting the party started, if you know what I mean. Oh, I think we all know what you mean. Beans, the musical fruit. So are you telling me that every time I chow down on a burrito bowl, I'm basically hosting a tiny rave in my gut? Pretty much. And just like any good party, the music can get a little funky depending on what's on the menu. But you know, this whole farting thing, it's not exactly a new phenomenon, is it? I mean, it's not like humans invented gas. That's what I'm thinking. Like, were cavemen letting loose back in the day? What about dinosaurs? Well, it's safe to say that as long as animals have had complex digestive systems, there's been, well, gas. So you're saying dinosaurs farted. I never thought about that, but it makes total sense. It's highly likely. Think about herbivores, those massive dinosaurs munching on leaves all day. All that plant matter, definitely a recipe for some epic gas. Right. And even today, we've got cows burping and farting up a storm. And not to get too serious too quickly, but isn't that a big deal for the environment? It is a concern, but we'll circle back to that a little later. For now, let's stick with the historical journey. Okay, so we've established that dinosaurs probably farted. What about our human ancestors? Did they just accept it as part of life? Were there fart jokes around the campfire? Well, we don't have any cave drawings to confirm the jokes. But as humans evolved and our diets became more diverse, so did our gut bacteria. And with that diversity came a wider range of, shall we say, aromatic experiences. So the more varied the diet, the more um, colorful the farts. Yeah. Fascinating. But I'm guessing attitudes towards all this gas haven't always been the same throughout history. You're absolutely right. Take ancient Rome, for example. Did you know that Emperor Claudius actually declared farting acceptable at banquets? Wait, seriously, the emperor of Rome was totally cool with people letting loose at dinner parties? That's wild. Why was he so chill about it? Well, it's not just that Claudius was uh, particularly open-minded about bodily functions. It was more of a reflection of the Roman attitude towards those things in general. They were a lot more, shall we say, pragmatic about it than some later cultures. Pragmatic. Right. So fast forward a few centuries, and I'm guessing things changed a bit, right? Like 
I don't imagine medieval knights farting in shining armor. You're right. The Middle Ages brought a different perspective. With the rise of Christianity, there was a greater emphasis on modesty and controlling bodily urges. Farting in public, which might have been met with a shrug in Roman times, became a bit more taboo. So no fart jokes in King Arthur's court. Well, not so fast. Even with a shift in sensibilities, medieval literature and art were surprisingly um, candid about bodily functions. Oh, right. Chaucer, the Canterbury Tales. There's some pretty uh, vivid stuff in there. Exactly. It seems like no matter how much societies try to uh, sanitize human behavior, those bodily functions always find a way to make themselves known whether it's through humor or, well, other means. Right. It's like trying to hold back a, well, you know, <laughs> it's going to come out eventually. So the Middle Ages had Chaucer. What about the Renaissance? Did Michelangelo ever sketch a good fart joke? Well, maybe not explicitly, but the Renaissance did bring a renewed interest in the human body and with it a more open discussion about bodily functions. True, it was the age of anatomy, right? They were dissecting bodies, exploring how everything worked. I guess farts would have to be part of the conversation eventually. And yet, as we know, the Victorians had other ideas about how to handle those conversations, or rather, how to avoid them entirely. Okay, so we went from the Romans, who were kind of into it, to the Middle Ages, where they were like, eh? And then to the Victorians, who wanted to pretend like none of this was happening. Pretty much sums it up. The Victorians, bless their hearts, they really tried to sweep bodily functions under the rug. But of course, what happens when you try to contain something as... Um, natural as a fart. It's going to come out one way or another, right, sometimes, in <laughs> right. spectacular fashion. Exactly. But I think what really changed the game wasn't just our tolerance for talking about farts, but our scientific understanding of them. Right, that because it was around the 19th and 20th centuries that science really started to uh, dissect the fart, so to speak. Precisely. With advancements in chemistry and microbiology, scientists could finally identify the specific gases that make up a fart, figure out how they're produced, the whole nine yards. So no more blaming it on the dog or the swamp gas. Not unless the dog ate all the beans. This is where things get really interesting, though. As scientists dug deeper into this whole world of digestion, they realized just how crucial our gut bacteria really are. And not just for, you know, producing gas. Right. We're talking about a whole ecosystem in there, affecting everything from how we digest food to what our immune systems. You got it. The gut microbiome, as we call it now, turned out to be way more complex and important than anyone initially thought. And suddenly those little fart factories in our guts weren't so funny anymore, huh? Well, they were still good for a laugh, but there was this newfound respect for what they could tell us about our health. Okay, so how did that play out? Did doctors start prescribing, like, fart analysis? You laugh. But it's not that far off. Doctors can actually analyze the composition of someone's gas to help diagnose things like lactose intolerance or irritable bowel syndrome. It's a real thing. Wow. So instead of being something we're embarrassed about, farts could actually be like a medical marvel. That's a plot twist I didn't see coming. The human body is full of surprises. <laughs> but you're right. Alongside these scientific discoveries, popular culture also started to embrace the fart shall we say, a little more openly. Oh, yeah, the floodgates opened, Blazing Saddles, Shrek, the list goes on. Suddenly, fart jokes were box office gold. It's interesting, isn't it? Like, society needed permission to laugh about it again. Oh. And once science gave us the, okay, well, there was no stopping it. And let's be honest, sometimes a well-timed fart joke is what the world needs. But all this talk about gas production, it does make you think about the uh, bigger picture, right? We touched on cow farts and their impact on the environment earlier, but maybe you can elaborate on that a bit more. Absolutely. You see, when cows digest their food, they produce a lot of methane. And methane, as we know, is a potent greenhouse gas, even more so than carbon dioxide. Right. Like, way worse for the environment when it comes to trapping heat in the atmosphere. And considering how many cows there are in the world, that's a lot of methane. It's a significant contributor to our overall greenhouse gas emissions which is why there's so much research going into finding ways to reduce methane production in livestock. So it's not just about making farms smell better, it's about saving the planet. It's about finding sustainable ways to produce the food we need while minimizing our impact on the environment. And who knew, maybe the humble fart could hold the key to a greener future. They're actually developing things like methane capturing backpacks for cows. Wait, pow backpacks? Seriously? I know, it sounds like something out of a cartoon, but it's true. These backpacks trap the methane cows release and either convert it to a less harmful substance or 
get this, potentially even harness it for energy. Wow. So from the dinner tables of Roman emperors to the uh, backsides of cows wearing backpacks, the fart has truly had a wild ride. And it goes to show, sometimes the most unexpected things can hold the key to solving some of our biggest challenges. All it takes is a little curiosity and a willingness to, well, look a little deeper. Absolutely. And, you know, on that note, I think we've done a pretty thorough deep dive into the wonderful world of farts today. We've gone from the science of what they are to the history of how we viewed them and even their potential impact on the future of our planet. Who knew something so um, universally experienced could be so surprisingly complex? So next time you let one loose, take a moment to appreciate the incredible journey that went into that little toot.